On this channel, I've mainly been putting art projects, visualizations, community projects, and other things associated with combining multiple speedruns together. This has moderate value from an entertainment or educational standpoint, although the technology I've been developing here does have an end goal which is actually to support the kind of live, exciting, accessible, approachable speedrunning competitions that I would like to see. You see, the main issue with multi-screen competitions is that you really need a strong prior familiarity with the game to understand them. And there's practically a very low limit on the number of competitors. A really common thing here is that it's actually very difficult to see who's in first, who's on second, etc. It's difficult to know where to look and how to parse this visual bombardment of information which serves to exclude the casual or uninitiated viewer. However, if we can extract relevant information and combine it together into an enjoyable format, ah... Then we're talking. I think if done properly, something like this could be a pretty big deal. And I made some big progress lately, which is in this box. Uh, let me build up to it just a little bit slower, though, because it's not very pretty, and I'm going to need you to use a little bit of your imagination. All right, just a little peek, some wires, lights. Okay, we'll get to why I've gone this route in just a little bit. Up to this point, I've been developing bespoke software and using more or less off-the-shelf hardware. A main theme has been extracting information from video data. The Nintendo Entertainment System outputs composite video, which, well, we need to turn that into a more usable format with, for example, an easy cap, I don't recommend this, or a RetroTINK 2X and Capture Card, I, I moderately recommend this. Or you could have Tim Worthington's NES RGB mod, a SCART splitter, professional video monitor, open source scan converter, and a Capture Card, which of course I recommend because look at these pixels. But it's expensive and difficult to set up. Then, once you have that video data in the computer, you still need to parse it. I've been using fast Fourier transforms, template matching, and convolutional neural networks, and other conventional image processing techniques, but it's actually been quite difficult and time-consuming to do this. It's also error-prone. Now, no one called me out on these visual glitches, but they do bother me. This also requires a tremendous amount of effort on a per-game basis, and it's only applicable to very visually simple games. Now, I won't dwell too much on the issues of parsing video data. Trust me, there's a lot more. But essentially, this is an inverse process in that we are taking some outputs and trying to determine the inputs. And, and there's nothing inherently wrong with that. We solve a lot of inverse problems in a lot of different contexts. But honestly, it would be a lot nicer if instead we just had the inputs. But they're in the console. Imagine this. The Nintendo Entertainment System goes to sleep after a long day of do-do-do-do-do-do. And when he wakes up, nothing seems different at all. But in the night, we have abducted him opened him up, and surgically installed a small device which has attached to all of his little brain wires with a chip from 37 years in the future which silently observes all of his feeble 2 megahertz thoughts. He has no idea and just plays on. But we know. We know everything. And we can use that information to make our combined view and do all kinds of awesome things. And that's what this is. Which, okay, it, it really isn't. This is, of course, huge and gross and bulky, and it's an initial prototype that doesn't actually do everything I want yet. It's using this honestly kind of old and outdated FPGA development board, and it doesn't even actually talk to the computer or my other code yet, but it's a step in the right direction, okay? Let me show you just a little bit. First of all, the way that I'm tapping into the NES is something I haven't seen before. 
I got these little castellated boards made that attach really easily and solidly to the back of the CPU here. And I've got this flat cable that snakes its way out of the vent here on the bottom and requires absolutely no irreversible cuts or modifications to the device, which is important to me. Then on this perf board, which I won't bother to explain how stupid things are, <laughs> this, this X and sad face really summarize how I feel about it. But anyway, I have a ton of these little guys here, which serve two purposes. First, they take the 5 volt signals of the NES and level translate them into 3.3 volts. We don't want to let out any magic smoke or, God forbid, operate this chip outside its specifications. But they also enforce galvanic isolation between the two sides. There's no way that anything on this side can mess with this side, which is also very important to me. We can't have our patient knowing we are watching his every thought. But then, the point is, I can program this FPGA using the computer, using Verilog, uh, which for a C++ programmer like me, uh, is extremely scary, but I've muddled through a little bit, <laughs> and I do literally mean muddled through. With this whole process, there have been dozens and dozens of failures, stupid mistakes and challenges, which I'm just completely glossing over here. I am the totally wrong kind of engineer for this sort of thing, and I've done some really dumb things and broken a ton of stuff <laughs> and cost myself a lot of time, money, and sanity. But whatever, check this out. So this was my first program. It watches only two lines, the reset line, which is this button, and the non-maskable interrupt, which is the signal from the picture processing unit to the central processing unit that tells it a new frame is starting. It's a timer, a frame perfect timer that knows when you reset, amazing. Then I wrote this, and oh boy, this is something fancy. It's a physical RAM watch. <laughs> See, I can change these little switches here to change what address I'm looking at, and the value is shown on the LEDs. Here, I'm watching 74A, which in Super Mario Bros. is more or less the first player's controller state. Look, <laughs> I press a button on the controller, and it lights up. Fantastic. Of course, I can watch the object attribute memory in a similar way, or like the number of coins, and all the other bits and bobs of information I need to make the combined view. This is what I was talking about earlier, and that I need a little bit of your imagination, though. A couple of lights on a board with a bunch of gross wires over here. Eh. I mean, but you see, once I get this information back on my turf into the computer, Ha <laughs> ha! See, that's when the real fun will begin. This has the potential to be much faster, much more accurate, and it's certainly more general and more elegant. This is way, way easier to extend to other games, and even eventually other consoles. It's still a ton of work and effort, and don't get me wrong, but it's way easier and I can absolutely foresee a future where we abduct the Super Nintendo or other things. And this could be quite special. So obviously we're not done yet, or even really that close. We have many, many challenges remaining. There's a ton of problems that need to be addressed. The first problem is of course that I'm really starting to need some help. I am completely out of my element with this electronic stuff, I'm the wrong kind of engineer for this, <laughs> and honestly, it's a near miracle that I've got as far as I can without blowing anything up. Well, anything up too badly. I mean, I had one electrical engineering class over 10 years ago, and all I really remember from that is Ohm's law, some of Kirchhoff's laws, and that they use J instead of I for the imaginary unit. So I'm all ears for comments or suggestions, especially if you know a modern FPGA development board that's actually in stock and I could use. You see, learning some of this electronic stuff during a global chip shortage has been, yeah, just great. 
And I'm also starting to look for more help than just with the electrical engineering stuff. You see, I really do want to start pushing this beyond the one crazy person show, right? By building a sort of, you know, a Rolodex of consultants and interested parties. Are you an artist, a programmer, an electrical engineer, videographer, musician, editor, tasser, marker? I don't know. Do you do something that you think could be helpful for this kind of thing? Are you willing to take on certain well-defined tasks and contracts? I mean, I'm looking for people with these kinds of complementary skills to my own and with a portfolio who are willing to do paid work to support this effort. Another problem is that, well, all this stuff, equipment, time, everything, well, it isn't free. So I am interested in means of funding this effort, which could help to accelerate it especially if I'm starting to get other people involved. I do take that quite seriously, and I'm not jumping into anything there. This is still a relatively slow hobby slash side project that I tinker with as I have time. And when it comes to my limited non-work time, painting my daughter's nails or making electromagnets with my kids is more important. Also, I have a lot of work going on this year that should be ending around December time. So this year is going to be a little bit slower because I'm quite busy with a bunch of stuff. But following that, hopefully some time will free up and we'll be able to get moving on this faster. I am open to ideas and thoughts on the financial aspect of the project because it would be good to remove me as the bottleneck and kind of get more stuff going in a way that makes sense. Also, just a brief follow-up on our visual leaderboard. Thank you again to everyone who helped and all the members of the Discord server. As I mentioned in that final update, all of the biggest helpers got their posters and everyone who wanted got a thank you letter. Thank you so much for everyone who helped with that project and please check it out if you missed it. Finally, subscribe and do the YouTube things, I suppose, if you want to follow along. Share with relevant people who you think would be interested in helping. Join the Discord. And if you're willing to put yourself in the Rolodex, so to speak, or engage in more serious conversation, then email me at flibbitydibbity at gmail.com. That's F-L-I-B-I-D-Y-D-I-B-I-D-Y at gmail.com. I guarantee I will respond to you. That's also something that's important to me. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around and all the best. I'm still really gung-ho on this project. I'm excited to see where it can go. And well, I just need your help.